I, it's great to see everybody, but I love, I, I love to come to church now, you know, it's just tough. And I gather with my brothers and sisters, we're like-minded people, and you know, you can just worship and honor God and fellowship with each other, and just be ourselves, amen? amen. And not have to put on a face, a church face, or any other face, you know? Amen. We can just be ourselves. God says, come as you are. He wants to have a relation, a real relationship with us. And he asks us in return to have real relationships with each other and accept each other. Amen? Yeah. And, and edify and build one another up. Because the world loves to tear us down with everything that's wrong with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Jesus always looked for the best in people. Amen? Mm -hmm. And God commands us to do the same thing. All of us have a sin nature that at any given time can work in our hearts and change our minds and make us do crazy things that we don't want to do. Right. It's up to us to be gracious and humble, knowing that when we fall, we need grace and mercy. And when someone else falls, that they need grace and mercy, Amen. that we don't become harsh and critical towards them. Amen? Amen? Like the Pharisees were, thinking that they arrived. The only time we're going to arrive when Jesus comes back or we go home to be with him. Amen? All right. We got a beautiful scripture up there, 1 Corinthians ch chapter 10. We'll start there before we go, go to our message. What a beautiful day today, huh? Amen. Oh, boy, it's, I love the seasons. Boy. It starts to get nice. It kind of takes that depressive state of mind out. When yeah. The sun comes out and you feel better. And you want to do things. And God, God, God is good, right? He tells us. You know, seasons of our life. Seasons in the outward, the, see, the same thing we see, whatever you're going through, God says that's only for a season, mm -hmm. that it's going to pass, things are going to get better. You know, even after we get blessed, we have to understand the re how God works. After we get blessed, He gets, gets the scissors out and starts pruning us more, because mm -hmm. He wants us to become more and more like Him. Mm -hmm. Amen? So we have to understand the principles of God's character, mm -hmm. that's what we're going to be talking about. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, look at verse 11. Now, if we back up, 1 Corinthians 10 was all about the nation Israel and all the mistakes they made. And now Paul was trying to say, when you understand what they did, to don't follow their example and learn from what they did so, they don't, so we don't fail. That's why we read the Bible from cover to cover, so we understand all their mistakes so we don't make them. Amen? They help us. It says in verse 11, these things happened to them as examples for us. So that's why it's very relevant to read the Bible from cover to cover to see all the examples that God made and how we handle all the situations and how His character actually works. Can I get an amen? amen? And that's important that you understand the whole counsel of God. They were written down to warn us who lived at the end of the age. Look at verse 12. If you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. So the Bible's telling us pride can kick in at any given time in a believer's life, thinking that they have something to do with their success. But all of our success as a Christian is through Christ, not through the flesh. Okay, we have to understand that. There's nothing good in us in our flesh. Pride is a big deterrent from spiritual growth. Thinking that you're smarter than someone else or that you're smarter than God, or can figure God out. Now it says, be careful not to fall. Look at verse 13. The temptations in your life, so we all have temptations, are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. We have a faithful God. He says He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. Now you know it as well as I do. When we get tempted to do something, how strong it is to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. We get tempted to do something lustful, or we get tempted to lash back out at someone. How we feel that it's never going to go away unless we do it. Mm -hmm. But God says right here, God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure so that's why we have to learn how God works. So when you get ten tempted, not if, that I have the power within me now to say no to the temptation. Mm -hmm. Again, amen. amen. Not just fall into it. It will pass. And God will give us a way out. And what's the way out? Learning His character and His ways and, to, and focusing on Him instead of the temptation. Amen? amen? That's how we get it. That was a great scripture, by the way. 
I can go on and on with that. We stay in that chapter all night. But I can't because we got other things to conquer tonight. Well, thank you for sharing that, uh, writing that up there. That was a great, great scripture. So we have to understand, who doesn't get tempted in here to do something that's against God? When that comes, we have the power to say no to it and not to fulfill it. Even though it seems like it's not going to go away until we do. <laughs> we have to say no. In the power of who? Jesus, not the flesh. In the flesh, we're going to fail. We're going to do it. The, fle the flesh is very um, selfish and it wants to fulfill all the desires of it. But the spirit is very selfless, saying, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to not do that because of what God did for me and what Jesus did for me. I'm not going to do that for my brothers and sisters in the church so it can grow and get stronger. You see, when you take it outside of you, now you have the power to overcome it. Amen? Amen. Knowing that it's going to affect someone else. All right, we're going to continue tonight with our study on God's character. We all know that believing in Jesus, we have God, but we have to get to know his character because why is it so important we get to know how he works? Well, you're not going to trust somebody you don't know mm -hmm. with the circumstances in your life. So if you don't know how he works, when the situations come up, you're not going to trust them. And you're going to handle things your way. But you have to learn how, his, how he works and how his character works. And we talked about the attributes of God, and we're going to get into them tonight, but we're going to also get into... What happens after you know him and understand the attributes? You have to what? After that, there's another thing that happens. You have to believe it and then trust it. What he's saying and his character. Can I get an amen? amen. We're going to be talking about that tonight. But we're going to be talking about a few of his attributes first, okay? Okay. Is everybody with me so far? Okay. When we speak of God's attributes, okay... We are talking about those characteristics that help us to understand who he truly is, okay? That which follows what we're going to be talking about, yet incomplete is an incomplete list, yet it's a summary about some of his attributes, okay? Before we get into some of them, we're going to talk, I'm going to just go through a couple of them, okay? Then I got something else to talk about. It's very, very important. Okay. So Jesus came to reveal the God of the Bible. We have to understand, if we want to know how, to how we would handle life, we look the way Jesus handled it. He used every character of God to handle every situation in life. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Jesus came, and God has revealed himself in his word, or his book. Any deviation from that insight from him is a made-up God. Okay? The Bible says to praise God for who he is, especially in prayer. Much of Psalms is a good example of this. Most people concentrate their praise in just a few areas, okay? Such as God's love, and then spend the rest of their prayers asking Him for things. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. All right, the first thing, I'm just going to say, I'm going to go through the attributes quick, okay? And then we're going to get into believing and trusting in them, okay? We talk about wisdom, okay? God's wisdom is the ability to devise perfect ends and to achieve these ends by the most perfect means. In other words, God makes no mistakes. Can I get a big amen for that? God doesn't make mistakes. We do. Okay. He is the Father who truly knows best. Paul, as Paul explains in Romans 11.33. We're not going to go there. Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand His decisions and ways. Right? We can't figure God out. God's infinitude, okay? God knows no boundaries, okay? He's infinite. He's without measure. This attribute, by definition, impacts all of the others, okay? Since God is infinite, everything else about him must also be infinite, okay? God's sovereignty. This is the attribute by which he rules his entire creation, okay? It is the application of his other attributes of being an all-knowing and all-powerful. It makes him absolutely free to do what he knows to do to be the best, okay? God is in control of everything that happens. Man still has a free will and is responsible for his choices in life. Don't you wish sometimes God would just take over mm -hmm. and make, the, <laughs> and make uh, 
choices for us that are going to be lined up with his will. Yeah, How many of us still make mistakes? <laughs> Come on. We're, we're saved and going to heaven. I thought we were perfect. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You wish. Right? If we were perfect, we would not need a Savior. So we have to understand He's perfecting us. Perfection is maturity. So if we became perfect, then we wouldn't need Him anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's a daily dependence on Him that helps us grow and become perfected. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Okay. So we know it's His sovereignty. But we're responsible to make the choices. Alright, He's holy. His holiness. This is the attribute that sets God apart from all created beings. It refers to His majesty and His perfect moral purity. Okay? There is absolutely no sin or evil thought in God at all. His holiness is the definition of that which is pure and righteous in all the universe, wherever God has appeared, such as to Moses at the burning bush, that place becomes holy just for God had been being there. Remember he said, take up your sandals. Yeah. You're on holy ground. Wherever God appears, it becomes holy. Guess what? God appeared to you. You became holy. Mm. He made you holy when Jesus came into you. Amen. Now, do I feel holy? No. God sees us like he sees Jesus because of what we believe, not what we do. Mm -hmm. We have to understand it's by believing in him that God sees us as holy. Our performance cannot make us holy. How many of us try? Oh, I'm going to be good today. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get jealous. I'm not going to snap at anybody. I'm going to be patient. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And you can't even get out the door <laughs> before you start snapping, become impatient, and start saying things. Can I get an amen? amen? Okay, so we know that we can't do it. He's the one that does it through us. That's why all glory has to go to Him. Okay? He's the Trinity. Okay? Though the actual word is not used in the Bible, the truth of God revealing Himself in three persons is included. Okay? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all called God. Given worship as God, exist externally, eternally, and are involved in doing things only God can do. Although God reveals Himself in three persons, God is one and cannot be divided. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that. You cannot have God without the Holy Spirit, and you cannot have God without Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, oh, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Well, you don't have the right God then. Mm -hmm. There's only one God, and you can't separate the Trinity. Amen. Okay? If you believe in any other God, it's the God of this world, and you're actually worshiping the devil, not even knowing it. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You cannot separate the Trinity. Anybody who says they believe in God mm -hmm. has to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and has to believe in the Holy Spirit too, mm -hmm. for them to become to have the real God in their life. Because tell me, there's a lot of there's a lot of false gods out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people mention God all they want, but they will never mention Jesus. Mm -hmm. They'll mention God. Oh, I love God. No, Jesus is God too. Yes. And the Holy Spirit. Amen? You yeah. can't separate that. Yeah. So don't be fooled by people say they have God. It's a different God. Okay? His omniscience. God possesses perfect knowledge and therefore has no need to learn. Okay? God has never learned and cannot learn. Okay? Omniscience means all-knowing. God knows everything, and His knowledge is infinite. It is impossible to hide anything from God. Now, we can hide good things from each other, right? But you can't hide from God. He sees everything. As a matter of fact, He's in you. So whatever you do, guess what? You bring God with you. Mm -hmm. That gives me, let me tell you something, that's one of the things that deters me from sinning. Mm -hmm. Knowing that I'm taking Jesus into this. And mm -hmm. in my... When I'm going to do something, here's what I do personally. I say, can I bring Jesus with me to this place? Whatever I'm going to do. Can I bring him to here, to there? Whatever I'm going to do or think. Can I bring him there? If I can, that's good. But if i got to leave Jesus behind, it's not God's will. Amen? It's something we do for the flesh. That's a good barometer. That's what I use. It helps me all the time. Okay, can I take Jesus here? Can I, tell, can I take Jesus when I'm going to... What's going to come out of my mouth right now? Mm. Can I represent God properly right now? Mm. Okay, His faithfulness. Everything that God has promised will come to pass. Everything, okay? His faithfulness guarantees this fact. 
He does not lie. Again, amen for that. Amen. What he has said in the Bible about himself is true. Jesus even said that he is the truth. Mm -hmm. This is extremely important for the followers of Jesus because it is on his faithfulness that our hope of eternal life rests. He will honor his promise that our sins will be forgiven and that we will live forever with him. Amen? Amen. By believing in Jesus, all our sins are forgiven. The ones we already committed and the ones we still will. Thank God, it's covered in the blood. Thank you for that. Right, Lord? It's not dependent on... There's a lot of Christians that think after they get saved, their performance saves them. Your performance can never save you. Why do I got to keep going back to this? Because the world demands performance from us. So we come into the Bible or into Christianity with performance. Oh, I'm a good Christian today. I helped the poor and I helped some... And I did something good. Well, did you do it to honor God or you get honored for it? Did you do it to get a plaque with your name on it? Or did you do it and say, shut up, I want God to get on it for it. I'm going to do these things of charity for Jesus and not put myself on the plaque. Amen? Amen. That's how you know. I'll use a very simple term. When you let somebody go, right? You stop and you let them go, and then they don't leave. Thank you. And you say, well, how rude. They could have at least said thank you. You did it for the wrong reason. You wanted a reward for what you did. Instead of saying, I did that because, you know what? I hope someday somebody will let me go. And I'm going to do it to glorify God and keep my mouth shut. I'm not looking for a handshake or a wave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the difference, the motive. Mm -hmm. How many of us do things like that in the flesh and then say something after? Wow, they didn't even wave. Right? Why, were they supposed to wave? Were you supposed to do something good to get recognized for? Or are you supposed to do something good because it's the right thing to do? Not to get a reward for it. Mm -hmm. Even Christians, right? We do good things. I go to Bible school. I say, oh, how come nobody's recognizing what I'm doing? God sees. He says, if you want recognition here, that's the only reward you'll ever get. Mm -hmm. Boy, if I wanted to get recognized for what I do, I would have quit already. Because if anything, you get persecuted more than you get recognized. Mm -hmm. You do God's will. Mm -hmm. Right? Even when you do God's will to the unbelieving world, they call you weird. Mm -hmm. They say, what's wrong with you? You going to let them get away with that? Okay. God is love. You know love, right? Love is such an important part of God's character that the Apostle John wrote, God is love. This means that God holds the well-being of others as his primary concern. When you tell somebody you love them, you hold, this means that God holds the well-being of others. That means when you become God, when you have God's love, you, 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 you give up yourself for the benefit of others. You have a concern for them. You give up your selfish ways so you can do things for God. See, that's God's love. For a full definition of love, it's 1 Corinthians 13, which we know very well here, don't we? <laughs> to see love in action, study the life of Jesus. Okay? His sacrifice on the cross for the sins of others is the ultimate act of love. God's love is not a love of emotion, but of action. His love gives freely to be the object of its affection to those who choose to follow His Son, Jesus. Amen? Amen. God loves us unconditionally. You can't do something right now to get out of God and make God not love us. And aren't you grateful for that? Yes. People hold us accountable. It's conditional love. Mm -hmm. God is unconditional. Thank God for that. But we have to understand these attributes and get to know them before we can actually trust them. Mm -hmm. Right? Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. See, if you don't trust what God's Word says and all His character, you're not going to be a happy Christian. You're going to be a miserable Christian because you're still trusting yourself over the trusting God. If you want to be happy in Jesus, you have to trust and obey what the Bible says. Self-existence, okay? Self-existence. When Moses asked who he was talking to in the burning bush, God said, I am the one who always is. God has no beginning or end, okay? He just exists. 
Nothing else in the, all the universe is self-caused. Only God. In fact, if anything else had created him, that thing would be God. This is a difficult concept for our minds, since everything else we will ever encounter comes from something other than itself. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, in the beginning, God, he was already there. Mm -hmm. Right? In the beginning, God. Yep. God was already there in the beginning. Okay. Self-sufficiency. The Bible says that God has life in himself. Like it says in John 5, 26, all other life in the universe is a gift from God. He has no needs and there is no way he can improve. To God, nothing else is necessary. He does not need our help with anything. He doesn't need our help to help us overcome our sin nature. Have any men for that? Amen. As a matter of fact, if we can overcome our sin nature, we wouldn't need a savior. How many sin nature still controls them mm -hmm. at times? Well, you've been walking with the Lord for a long time. How come? Because we've got it. It's in us. The sin of Adam is in every believer. And it's still, and it ain't going to get rid of it till we go home to be with him. We have to learn how to fight it and master it. That's why Jesus came, to help us fight back. Okay? God is all justice. Okay? Listen, when you try to take justice in your own hands as a Christian, you are doing wrong. You are sinning. Okay? You are sinning against God. The Bible says that God is just. But it, it is His character that defines what being just really is. Okay? He does not conform to some outside criteria. Being just brings moral equity to everyone. Okay? When there are evil acts, justice demands that there be a penalty. Since God is perfect and has never done evil, no penalty would ever be necessary However, because of his love, God paid the penalty for our evil deeds by going to the cross himself. His justice needed to be satisfied, but he took care of it for all who will believe in Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, some of these things we already know, right? But guess what? How many of them do we trust and believe, uh, obey? Is the question, right? More. I'm not done yet. Immutability. This simply means that God never changes. Okay, I'm not trying to give any lofty words here. Okay, they use these words, but it simply means that God don't change. Okay, immutability. It is why the Bible said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Okay. Mercy. Okay, God is full of mercy. Matter of fact, I'm just going to keep going here. He's eternal. Okay? God is goodness. Because I want to get to the point of what I want to make tonight. God is gracious. Thank you, God, for being so gracious towards me. Thank you for all the attributes that you have, that you have implanted in me, so I can be that way to others and myself. First, you have to be like that to yourself. Because you cannot offer something something you don't possess. You, all of God's character is given to each and every believer. We have the character of God. Amen? What stops it? Our character. Yes. Yeah. Our character is defective. Right? We have a very defective character that is self-serving and selfish. God's character is selfless and looking for the benefit of others. Amen? So we're very selfish at our core. Mm -hmm. When we want something or have to do something, God takes second place. Okay? God's omnipresent. Okay? Omnipresence. Now, I'm not trying to make this a high and lofty word. This theological term means he's always around. He's always present, okay? That's all it means. God is everywhere and he's always with us. He's never going to leave us. Do we always feel like God's with us? No. It's a fact. All these things I'm talking about are facts, not emotions, okay? This is the description of the God of the Bible. All other ideas about God are, according to the Bible, false gods, okay? They are from the imagination of mankind. Mm -hmm. By learning the attributes of God, you may praise God for who He really is, and now for how and, and is, and for how each of His attributes impacts your life in a positive way. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's why we worship God. All right, now we're going to get into what I really want to talk about, believing and trusting in all the stuff we just talked about. Okay? 
Believing and trusting in God's character. Okay? You ready for this now? I'm just getting warmed up. There's a lot of good here, especially in the times we're in right now. This is going to help a lot of us if we stay focused, okay? So don't, try not to lose you, okay? This is where, by believing and trusting in God's character, this is where we can find strength and hope in the midst of overwhelming trials, okay? There's no doubt about it, we are living in unprecedented times. It almost seems like the world is out of control, okay? There is so much fear, grief, anger, and trouble going on right now that it's hard not to lose hope, even Christians. Can I get an amen for that? And Christians who do not are not rooted and grounded in God's word and do not know his character, lose hope. Okay? From the pandemic, okay, to economic hardships, to racial tensions, to violence in the streets, okay, there is much to disturb our hearts and minds. We are experiencing isolation and loneliness because of social distancing and very limited physical contact. So little of life feels normal these days. You know, even... Oh, I can't wait till things get back to normal. It's like, this has been going on for what? Over a year now. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. It's almost like everything changed. Mm -hmm. Right? These problems have led us to question a lot of our long-held beliefs. Many of us believe that eventually all will be made right. Okay? That truth will prevail. That justice will be served. That peace will be restored. It's like we're waiting for God to show a strong hand and save the day. We just didn't think we'd have to wait so long. But if you read the Bible, the way God works, He works over periods of time. Even the way the Bible is laid out, everybody thinks they go from page to page. There's years between all the events. Hundreds of years sometimes. As a matter of fact, it was 400 years before they even heard the word of God again. 400 years. Imagine the depravity of mankind from not hearing from God for 400 years yeah. and believing what they want to believe in their own eyes. Yeah. Just imagine how depraved they got. Yeah. And how depraved it's getting now that they want to take God out of America. Yeah. We're going to make our own commandments now. Do whatever you want. <laughs> These problems have led us, okay, to question a lot of our long-held beliefs, okay? It's true, we, as we know from the last book of the Bible, that one day all will be made right. Mm -hmm. How do you know the last book of the Bible if you never read it? Mm -hmm. All will be made right and God will save the day. One day, someday, God will give us a new heaven and a new earth and he will dwell with us and we will be his people. Amen. Go to Revelations 21.4. Here we go now. Let's tie this in with some scripture. You see, when you understand God's character and his ways, there's going to be hope for you. Because what he says here, now this is where the belief and trusting in what he says. Because if we go by our feelings, we're going to say, no way. But if we go by what the Bible says by faith, we're going to know. Look what it says in verse 4 of Revelation 21. I love this. This is a very comforting verse for me. Give everybody a chance to get there. That's how important this is. God said He's going to give us a new heaven and earth, and He can't lie. Amen. He's gonna. Amen. He says in verse four, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Okay, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. There's going to come a time for a believer that that's going to come to pass. Amen. We just have to trust in that. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with God. That's why we have to keep reading the Bible. 
We'll forget that. We see things that's going on around us and forget that when are these tears going to be wiped away? There's no tears and there'll be no more death or sorrow. Why? The world is full of death and sorrow right now. When is that going to come? Or pain. All these things are going forever. God promised it and it will come to pass. These are the things that give us hope. Amen? Amen. Okay. Are you with me now? Yeah. Stay with me here now. This is going to help you. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Until that day, how should we think and function? Until that day. What should we putting our hope in? We put our hope in. How do we encourage others who are going through trials as they never dreamed they have to endure? How do we encourage ourselves? These times that we all find these times that we all find ourselves are in hard are hard, but we must be aware that things could get harder. You know what everybody you ever know, somebody say, you know, how's things going? Things could be worse. Let me tell you something. It could be a lot worse for us. We're blessed. We're blessed right now that we can sit here and read the Word of God and ga gather in fellowship. There could come a day when we can't anymore. Like the children of Israel, as a matter of fact, who wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Okay? We too are experiencing a wilderness of our own. Okay? God led the Israelites into the desert to humble them and to test them in order to know what was in their hearts. You see? What does He do for it? Really know what's in our hearts when the tests and trials come. That's what's really in your heart. You see? Whether or not they would keep His commands. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. See, if you don't know the Word of God, you don't read the Word of God, you're not going to know. It's going to make us get what? Full of anxiety and depression, what we see around us, and it seems like there's no hope. But when you understand God's Word, that He's going to get us through, that He never leave us nor forsake us, and He's going to be faithful to us, that gives us hope. Look at Deuteronomy 8, verse 2. It tells us to remember. See, if you never read the Old Testament, you won't understand these things about God's character. It says in verse 2, Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years. Why did He do it? Humbling you and testing you so, to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey His commands. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. That's why He did it. We may be surprised by what our current circumstances have revealed about our hearts. As a matter of fact, God orchestrates okay, our circumstances to reveal our character. It's easy to trust God when the skies are blue, the birds are singing, and everything seems right with our little world. Okay? How are we doing with trusting God in these days right now? During these storms of life, we need an anchor for our souls. Okay? That anchor has to be the truth of what God has revealed to us about Himself, about His character. This is what sets our minds at ease. Too often we want to determine what God is like through our circumstances. Our circumstances were never intended to be used to evaluate God's character. If we want to see the character of God and what He's really like, we should look where? To the Word of life. Not to our circumstances. The Bible, God's very character, is revealed to us in the Scriptures. Okay? Amen. God reveals Himself to us in the life of His Son. Okay? Jesus told His disciple Philip that every, anyone who has seen Jesus has seen the Father. Go to John 14, verse 9. Is everybody with me so far on this? Yeah. 
This is, what's, this is the ink of the soul, our souls we need. Not anything the world has. Nothing material will anchor our souls. Nothing out there will give us that hope. But God, who created all this. Amen. See, when we put our trust in the right place, we don't fall apart. Amen. He's the one that puts us back together. But if you don't know his word or his character, then you can't trust him. You just know of God. You don't know God personally. Where you actually apply these things to your life and say, no, I'm not listening to what the devil says. I'm not listening to what the world says about it. I'm listening to what the Bible says about it. Then it's going to happen and God's got our back. Amen. Jesus has us. Amen. There's no need to go to anything else but the end. Amen. No matter how you feel. He's the anchor for our souls. Look at John 14, 9. Jesus replied, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am. That's what God says. You could become a believer. He says, you've been going to believe it for so long and you still don't know who I am. You still trust in the world. You never read the Bible. You still don't know who I am. Just coming to church doesn't make you know God. That's religion. Religion. I went to church. I did my duties. But you're not having a relationship with God. Your relationship starts when you use what you're learning. Yes. That's when the relationship starts. Saying, so, I'm not going to trust what I'm feeling right now. I'm trusting what God says. Amen. My emotions cannot control me. Yes. If you let your emotions control you, you are going to fall apart even as a Christian. Yes. Then you're going to go to the world for a solution. Instead of God. Look what it says. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Look, God already revealed himself to us. He's in us. We already have him. All that I need is already done. There's no, there's no more. You don't need anything else but a relationship with Jesus, the Bible says. And if you go towards that, Everything else, is, it'll fall into place. It says, seek me first, and all these things will happen. Amen. Most people don't do that. Amen. They still trust themselves in their ways. For what? Anything. God tells us to let go of that, because that's the problem. Okay, now listen. We're going to go to Jesus now, Okay. Here are some passages that give us glimpses of God's character, okay? Jesus shows us God's love as he died on the cross to redeem us. We already know these scriptures, right? But I'll put them into a perspective that's going to help us right now, okay? Go to John 3, 16. When you, when, when you use the scriptures in the message into a perspective, they take on a whole new meaning, amen? That's what I'm going to help you do so you can understand them better. So it tells us in John 3.16 how much God loves the world, not just believers. See, you have to understand, God doesn't just love believers. God loves everybody. He loves the world. Look what it says. For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. That's how God loves us. He loves the world. Listen. As a Christian, we get hard-hearted towards unbelievers because they don't know what we know. Jesus, God sends rain on the just and the unjust. He gives them the ability to make money and survive. Have you not noticed that people that are not going to church or believe in God are still existing? Mm -hmm. They're still getting by? And still, who do you think is controlling all that? Even though they don't know what God is. God's the one sustaining them. Can I get an amen for that? Mm -hmm. We're Christians. We should be helping out. Look, all right. Go to Romans 5.8 now. Go to Romans 5.8. This one really shows us how much God loves us. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. These are scriptures we all know pretty good, but look how good they will fall into place right now. Verse 8. But God showed His great love for us. He showed it. How did He show His great love for us? All right, let you get that. 
flip a few pages. Get to the get to the word. It's important. <clears throat> but God, verse eight. But God showed His great love for us. How did He do that? By sending Christ to die for us while we were still His enemy or still sinners. Mm -hmm. He sent Him to die and take the hit for us while we were still His enemy. Imagine if that didn't happen, we could never come to God ever. <clears throat> While we were still his enemy, while we were still sinners, Christ came. That's how much God's love is for his creation. God loves all of mankind, not just the church. People have to understand, God calls us to this, to go out there and get people into here, into the kingdom. Not to shun them, but to love them. The kind of love that only God can give, amen, through us. Okay, Jesus shows us God's compassion, okay, the second principle, as he healed the sick, fed the hungry, and allowed sinners to get close to him. Matthew chapter 8, go there. This is God's character through Jesus. This is Jesus living out God's character. This is how God lived, that Jesus would live in the world, and this is what we should model. Matthew 8, verse 14. This is beautiful. The heart of God. See, religion shows us a God of justice and anger and fury. God's looking at you. You're not going to church. You're not doing the right thing. Right? That's what religion teaches you. No, that's not God's character. God loves His creation. And the only reason why He does things is to draw us closer to Him and teach us to, be, to do the right thing. Amen. Look at verse 14. Matthew chapter 8, verse 14. When Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. Okay? But when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. Then she got up and prepared a meal for him. Wow, imagine that. Wow. Sick. Jesus healed us. She got up and made dinner for him. That's beautiful. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. Demon-possessed people. Think about what goes on inside your own heart. We think, no, we're possessed too. Demons yep. possess us. Yep. The demon of lust. Right. The demon of anger. The demon of fear. Right? Those demons go into believers. Everybody thinks these demons are some horn and pitchfork. No. These are enemies of the gospel. These are enemies that enter our minds. That lustful demon and the demon that makes us doubt and question God. Amen? Those are demons. <clears throat> People were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command. And he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah who said, He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. Amen? Amen. That's what he does. What's the disease? Sin. Sin. <coughs> Sin is the disease. Sin is the cause for all our ailments. Okay? Sin is the cause. And he healed it by going to the cross. Now our sins are all forgiven. Unfortunately, what Adam did, we had to inherit. Okay? So even though we have a new nature, we still got to carry this, drag this old nature around that comes and beats us up all the time. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Who can honestly say that sin nature doesn't win? <laughs> right? <laughs> but the hope is we have a new nature. And one day, we're not going to have that nature anymore. Amen. It's all going to be gone and the presence of sin is gone forever. Amen. That's the hope that I hope in. Amen. Because while we're here, it ain't going nowhere. You have to understand you have to live with a sin nature and trust in Jesus to overcome it. It's never going away. You have to make peace with that. There's nothing out there that's going to take that away of you. Okay? Nothing. It's in our DNA. We all inherit it. That's why if you trust in people to make the world better, you're trusting in yourself because we all have the same stuff in us. Okay? We all have motives, sin, evil, and the wrong stuff in us. That's why people can't fix us. That's why the world's a mess. Amen. There's only one who can fix it. Jesus. And our hope is in Him. Amen. Definitely not politics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you really 
think there's a system that man can create to take care of this evil world, you are deceived. There is no system that human beings can create to sustain us. That's why God holds this all together. Just imagine us. We'd already destroyed the world already. It was up to us. Thank you, Jesus, right? He's the one. That's why I put my thinking. Why do you think I spent so much time in the Bible? Because there's where my hope is. That's the only answers right in here. There's no answers in the world. No man. Look, you can't. God created us. We can't create God. We can't create a system that's going to make everything work properly. Only God can do that. So that's what we put our trust in. Thank you. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Amen. God is the one. Okay? Okay, third one. Jesus shows us God's grace as he forgave those who denied and deserted him. Go to John 21. I'm already out of time. This will be the last one. But we'll get back into this. I got more. I got more. I got more. I don't want anybody to fall out the window. Right? <laughs> Give them small doses. Take, we can get enough of this so we can actually have something to keep. Okay? We're going to lose you. John 21, verse 15. This will be the closing scripture. This is beautiful. John 21, 15. Everybody there? After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter. Am I at the right one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let me make sure. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. So, do you love God? It says then feed his sheep. Stop feeding yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what he said. That's what he said to me, John. Stop seeing. Feed my sheep. That's why I do this. I, my plans were different than this one. God's plan was different. Mm -hmm. He said, John, you're going to make a choice. Either serve me or yourself. Yeah. He says, if you love me, you'll serve me. That's how you know that you love God. You'll stop serving yourself and you'll start to serve him. And that takes time, and God has a plan for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to have to stop there. Hold that thought. If you love God, that's what he told Peter, then feed my sheep. Not go to church, worship. He said, feed my sheep. Mm. All right, we're going to close there. Thank you for me share that with you. I hope it's got something for you to think about. Brittany's going to come up and sing, and we're going to close.